Okay, so this morning I am back at Tesla West Drayton to pick up my 19 inch wheels. Just get a quick bit of extra juice as well. Cool, well they're just gonna go grab the wheels and hopefully they'll fit in the back of the car. Yeah, I'm gonna put them in storage. Still haven't decided what to do about winter time. I think I might just see how grippy or not these wheels actually feel. Uh, it's very interested to know how long these tyres are going to last. Well, maybe about four or five. Let's find out. Ah, yes. Forgot that's not working. At least not until Monday. Yeah, so today I'm not really talking about Tesla. What I'm really talking about is Nissan. Because last night was the new generation Nissan Leaf reveal. Very exciting. 7.2 millimetres. Well, that was interesting. At least I know what they sort of more or less started on. I've actually done about a thousand miles already, so... <laughs> These tyres had better last longer than sort of 10,000 miles for me. Otherwise, well, I'll need new tyres in about three months. So, whilst I'm waiting for them to bring the tyres round, let's go through some of the things that I picked up from last night's webcast from Nissan. There aren't really a huge amount of surprises, to be honest, with the new Leaf, because most of the details had either been leaked ahead of schedule by cars stopped quick charging and people sort of poking around and having a bit of a look, or alternatively, Nissan themselves had actually told us about what to expect things like ProPilot and the e-pedal. When it came to the range, I was expecting either an option for 40 or 60 kilowatts or just 40 kilowatts. So I'm kind of got half of what I wanted there in that it's 40 kilowatts this year. Next year, there's going to be a 60 kilowatt hour version. So that's kind of disappointing if you want a new Nissan Leaf sooner rather than later, but it is good news if you're willing to wait that extra year. And I still think you'll probably wind up getting a 60 kilowatt hour next gen Nissan Leaf sooner than you would a uh, Model 3 in this country. Because Model 3 is nowhere near production, whereas presumably Nissan are going to ramp things and get the right hand drive versions sorted pretty immediately. But we'll have to see. And it's, you know, I could be wrong there. That's my suspicion. Will it be as good? Well, it's not going to look as good, in my opinion. I mean, I, I like the looks of the new Nissan Leaf, but it isn't as exciting and premium looking as the Model 3. Will it be more practical or not? I don't know. Those are the kind of things you can only really tell by seeing the cars in person. And although I've seen the prototype Model 3 in person, I didn't actually get a, a close look at it at all. So certainly I couldn't go opening the boot and poking around there or anything. So definitely it's going to be a little while. And of course the new Nissan Leaf. The existing Nissan Leaf is fairly practical. And from what I gather the interior space is quite similar between the two vehicles. So with any luck the new one will also be quite practical. Practical enough for me to put my folding bike in the back along with Jasper's bike? Probably not. But I bet you'll be able to put a roof rack on it. Excellent. Well, they've now put the tyres in the back. Wow. It really does fill the car up, doesn't it? You can see why I couldn't take the wheels with me when I got them changed and I had Jasper's bike in the back. It always amazes me how big the wheels on cars are. You don't, you don't think they're that big, but they're huge. Excellent. Right. Let's uh, get those home and out the car. The other thing I've got to do today is check out a potential new phone because I dropped my S7 Edge again and it is looking a little bit worse for wear now. At least now I have a fancy new phone without any cracks and this phone I'm going to keep in one piece. I think I'm going to, after this contract's done, I think I'm just going to not have a contract. Now I have to get the tyres out the back so that there's some room for Jasper when I pick him up. 
which is what I'll be doing as soon as I've got the tyres out the back. Time to get Jasper. S8 phone is charging up at the moment. Actually, it's an S8 Plus. What I've done is I've bought it outright, and which was expensive, I might add. But what that will mean is that in a number of months when my contract expires, firstly, I'll be able to pay less, and secondly, I'm actually freed from having to be with 3 Mobile. I can be with anyone I feel like who does a good deal and has really fast data in this area. So that extra freedom is worth having. This time, and I would be in really good too. Pleased to hear it. Can I have a treat? You've already had a treat, right. Yeah. I'm not doing my big bag. I had to put your big bike there, Jasper, because I need to put the tyres in the back of the car, remember? And they wouldn't fit with your bike in there. That's why we didn't take the tyres when we originally got them taken, you know, swapped over. So, let's round off today's video. At the moment, in the money no object category, I would go for any Tesla that I could get my hands on over the Nissan Leaf, because I don't think the Nissan Leaf has anything that is better than what Tesla offers. Certainly charging, superchargers are better, range, even the low end Model 3 is considerably more range than the current Nissan Leaf. The option in a year's time with the 60 kilowatt hour battery will be about the same. Although I suspect you're probably going to get a bit better range out of the Model 3 for highway driving Just because it looks a bit more aerodynamic to me, but that's kind of an unscientific Opinion now if we exclude the Teslas from the Equation that's when things get interesting. I think I would actually take the current 40 kilowatt hour Nissan Leaf over any other EV available including the i3 with the range extender because I like Nissan very much. Chademo is a very good charging option. Certainly in this country, it really does tick all the boxes. There's usually at least two Chademo points at all the motorway service stations, sometimes three. So you've got a bit of fallback should, it, should one of the chargers not be working, which is the main problem I have with the CCS charging cars. There's usually just the one point, so if that one isn't working, you can't use the other one because it's only got Chademo and a Type 2. So that's something to consider. In terms of acceleration, I would have thought the new Nissan Leaf would be a reasonable match for most of the other EVs, but it's not head and shoulders above or anything. But when it comes to range, it's pretty much there. And it's bigger than the Renault Zoe the 40 kilowatt hour version, which is a little bit small and a little bit anemic in terms of acceleration for my personal tastes. So there we have it. New Nissan Leaf, definitely good if you're not gonna be getting a Tesla anytime soon. The one in a year's time, the 60 kilowatt hour one, I'd say that might be even an interesting cross shot on the Tesla Model 3, especially if it comes in a little bit cheaper although we don't know if it actually will. I also just wanted to quickly mention some of the nonsense that BBC News has been spouting on their news article related to the new Nissan Leaf delivery. Specifically, Richard Westcott's analysis piece. And my favorite bit, I'm gonna quote this, is the bit at the end where he says, electric cars are all so expensive, fine. They're hard to charge if you lived in a terrace house. Again, fine. The batteries can lose power after a few years. Hmm, well, firstly, not really power, and secondly, even energy storage, they shouldn't. Especially the bigger battery ones, they should go easily for 10 years. Diesel and petrol cars are so convenient. Go anywhere, etc, etc. Electric cars aren't nearly there yet, he says. Well, that depends on your electric car, because He's basically saying in this analysis piece that you have to plan to go anywhere and if you don't plan then you could turn up somewhere and find the charger is not working. That's the example he cites. Somebody tried to go to the West Country in their electric vehicle. The first two chargers weren't working and they had a problem. And that's why 
Tesla have got the right idea by taking control of the infrastructure. Electric cars are not worth a damn if you don't have infrastructure to support them. And if the infrastructure is not reliable, then again, it's not worth it. They're not, they're not viable cars without good infrastructure. I've said this a million times, I can't believe that certain car manufacturers, in fact all car manufacturers apart from Tesla, don't seem to understand that. What is the point of having one quick charger that may or may not be broken and you have to check some online app before you leave to see if you can go on your journey at all or if you have to take some wild detour? That is not the future of driving. Tesla and their supercharger network, that is the future of driving. Just, you know, without the Tesla bits because of course that's just specific to one manufacturer. But this is what charging infrastructure should look like the country over for all EVs. I don't know if I'm gonna have time to drop this in or not, so maybe this will be the outtake. Honda has apparently signed some deal with, I don't know, ITN or something, to supply hydrogen for fuel cell drivers in the UK. It's gonna cost them 10 pounds per kilogram. And there's five and a half kilograms in your average fuel cell vehicle, so that's 55 pounds to fill up. It's basically the same price as petrol or diesel. And it takes no account of profit for the supplier or the cost of building the hydrogen stations. So hydrogen, that's a real goer. Tomorrow's gonna be fun. Going to an EV show at, ooh, where is it? Millbrook Proving Ground in Bedfordshire. I'm really looking forward to this. It was great fun last year. There were loads of companies. Got my press pass. Actually, that reminds me, I need to print that out. I hope you've enjoyed today's vlog post. If you have, remember to like it and share it and subscribe if you haven't already and follow me on Instagram if you don't already. And I'll see you tomorrow for the next installment of my daily vlog. Bye. Come on, let's go. Uh, what have we got in that bag? Just some things. Can I check? No. <laughs> No, you can't. No, they're things for daddy.